now with a Fox News alert. Defense Secretary Austin rushed to the hospital less than a month since he tried to hide his stay at Walter Reed for an infection he got from cancer surgery. The Pentagon issued a statement this afternoon saying the defense secretary was transported with a, quote, emergency bladder issue and went on to say Austin is, quote, retaining the functions and duties of his office. Uh, Joey, I want to begin with you because we're at a critical point when it comes to foreign policy uh, and international relations. And we have the defense secretary continuing his duties. Should there be a concern about leadership at this point? There's a concern. First of all, a concern for his health, and I want him to come out okay. He's, he's served his country honorably, uh, but beyond that, as a human being, and I want him to be healthy. I hope that this is precautionary and it moves fast. But yes, there's a big concern. Having sat in a room full of four star generals, Four star generals, a room full of four star generals, you have to widen the door before they can walk in because there's so much ego and brain trust walking in there. And that's not to be disparaging, that's to say that is a career of 30, 40 years. We've got almost 40 of them in our military. We condense that down to a Joint Chiefs of Staff, to service heads, and it all culminates to the Department of Defense Secretary. And the reason why I bring that up is think about this President Joe Biden is famous for being against most of the moves that President Obama made in Afghanistan. So if President Obama is sitting there and his VP is one direction, who's he going to look at to find the balance on that? This the nuance of the conversation on making big decisions that individuals matter. It's not just plug and play. So if Lloyd Austin is who President Biden has put all his trust and faith in to tell him what our, our military capabilities are and he's distracted because he's in pain or sick or hurt, mm -hmm. that matters because the nuance of his answer could determine what Biden decides to do. And we are now just, as this segment began, got reporting from Jennifer Griffin that he has now transferred his duties to the deputy secretary. So we thank Jennifer Griffin for the update on that. Right now, we're going to bring in Fox News contributor Dr. Nicole Sapphire. Uh, Dr. Sapphire, so great to see you. Thank you so much for doing this. When you heard about um, the, the secretary being rushed to the hospital, what was the first thing you thought about? Well, you know, Alicia, honestly, the secretary has had a very complicated um, course for his prostate cancer treatment. We know in early December, he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. December 22nd, he underwent, uh, they haven't given us all the options or the, all the details, but they said he underwent a procedure that required general anesthesia. Uh, the treatment options for prostate cancer are usually a radical prostatectomy or surgery or radiation. So it seems like he had surgery. New Year's Day, he was brought back to the hospital where he was admitted to the ICU for four days. Um, for an immediate complication. When we think of those immediate complications after prostatectomy surgeries, we think of bleeding, and it seems that he did have a fluid collection that needed to be drained. But now here we are, we're seven weeks after his surgery. And one of the most common things that we do see in post-prostatectomy patients, in about 30 to 50% of times, you can have um, incontinence or where you're, you know, your bladder and your urethra are not usually functioning um, appropriately. Now, the fact that he has transferred his duties as Jen Griffin just reported, you know, tells me that he's probably being admitted to the hospital. And usually you're not admitted for something like an inc incontinence. So my, my thoughts are maybe he has an infection as another complication. Maybe he needs to be inpatient to receive some IV antibiotics. I don't know. I'm certain that they're going to probably be doing a CT scan, making sure that there isn't any more fluid collections. If there's an infection, they're obviously going to be treating that. And, you know, we're just waiting for any more details at this time. Dr. This is Joey, um, looking at his original diagnosis and procedure, is there anything, um, I, I guess the question I'm trying to ask is, is there any cause for concern that they didn't get all the cancer or that, or that the procedure that happened before wasn't effective and that this is uh, less precautionary or an infection or even more serious? Is there any way to even predict that? So when you have a diagnosis of prostate cancer, uh, research shows that radiation and surgery really are um, equivalent when it comes to survival rates and outcomes. Um, sometimes you have to have the surgery if you have more involved of the prostate, it's not as focal, perhaps you have more lymph nodes involved. Um, and so my guess is that's why they did that. There is a higher complication rate when it comes to surgery um, in a lot of individuals. You know, I don't think this has anything to do with maybe they didn't get all of it. I think it is more a complication of the surgery of the procedure yeah. itself which is unfortunately a surgery and you know modern medicine is a wonderful thing but does come with risks and it does seem that he as I said is having a very complicated course. Hi Dr. Sapphire, Lisa Booth here. You know how much of a toll does treatment for prostate cancer have on the body? 
Oh, well, I, I'm obviously, Lisa, you know, any sort of cancer treatment, while we're trying to eradicate the cancer, we are essentially, you know, putting toxins into our body, whether it's chemotherapy, whether it's radiation, we have to try and kill those cancer cells. With that, we're also killing some of our healthy cells as well. Um, surgery alone, the general anesthesia, takes a physical and mental toll on our human body um, and the recovering from surgery, you know, obviously as well. And so the fact that he spent four days in the ICU because of severe complications, I mean, this is also, you know, decrease in, decreased his physical fitness. And so it's going to be quite the road to recovery at this point. Uh, Dr. Tom Shalou, sometimes I ask silly questions, but I'm going to ask a serious one here. I want to do a hypothetical, which I don't know if it makes you uncomfortable, but if, if this were someone, I'm assuming that he has spokespeople who say, oh, he's going to be back to work soon, he's doing fine, that's usually what they do. But if you knew someone, if someone was close to you and had this kind of medical profile, a father or an uncle, would you say to them, hey, you know, uh, maybe it's maybe it's time to kind of retire and stay home and fight the fight the illness, uh, you know, put all your energies that way. Would you say something like that? I'm just wondering. Yeah, so, Tom, obviously, that's that's not a ridiculous question, and certainly it's not going to make me uncomfortable. That's a legitimate conversation that we have with all of our patients. But I can tell you that I see women who have lumpectomies. I see men who have prostatectomies. I mean, they do go on back to work, back to living their normal lives. Now, personally, especially with the prostate surgery, that is a, a, quite an invasive surgery, and it really does take a good while of recovery. You're not supposed to have heavy lifting. So, you know, is it possible that perhaps he got back to work a little bit too soon than he should, especially given that he had he had some complications that landed him in the ICU. Absolutely. I personally, if this were, you know, my patient, my friend, my father, you know, I would say take as much time off as you physically can. I mean, it is it is important to make sure that the body heals itself. I mean, surgery and doctors and medic medicine, we can only do so much. The body also has to heal itself. And when you, you know, kind of jump right back in, whether it's work or physical activity, you're putting added stress on the body. And so it could actually delay your healing by doing that. Yeah. Dr. Sapphire, thank you so much for doing this today. You always do such a great job of walking all of us through this, um, these health issues. So it's so good to see you. Thank you. And we do um, send our best to the secretary and hope for a full recovery. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.